What's going on? Welcome back to The Oven's Garage. Today I'm going to be making a video on how to install a coolant filter into a first gen. The culprit here is Old Blue is going to be getting a coolant filter. Now the primary reason why I want to install a coolant filter into my truck is not because the chemical balance of the coolant in the engine block is off or I'm concerned about that as much. The primary reason that I'm installing this system is because of the debris that's in the coolant that clogs up my uh, heater core. Now, I last year had to flush my heater core because uh, in the cab it was not pumping out a lot of heat. And this past winter, I've already started to notice that again, this is happening. So there's debris in the heater core that's getting caught up, not allowing the coolant to flow through as well and produce more heat in the cab. So uh, my goal with this is to install one of these to take a lot of the contaminants out of the coolant system, any of the debris, the particles that can clog up the heater core. Now a benefit to this is yes, I can keep in check the chemicals in the coolant system, but um, you can also get these filters without uh, any sort of additives in them. Okay, so I'll link down below. Uh, there's about a 10 page document that goes over uh, what a coolant filter is, why it's important uh, for various dif different reasons, as well as uh, they have a catalog of different filters available based on engine size that you can run. Now this is put together by Cummins and Fleet Guard uh, and they sell it as a sort of a package. You can run their, their filter head, their filter head mount, as well as any of the filters that are in the system. And it's, I found it was just, just a good document to read through gives you a brief overview of what it is and why it's important. And then um, you can choose your filter and the route that you wanna go from there. All right, so just running through the parts that I'm gonna be using for this project. So just back here, this assembly um, it has a bracket and a filter head. This comes as an assembly from, uh, sold by Cummins and Fleet Guard. And I'll link the part number down below uh, with the link if you do wanna purchase it. I just want to shout out, you know, if you're local to Victoria, I got this at uh, my local Cummins dealer, Wilson and Proctor. And then I got all the fittings over at Greenline. Uh, super helpful. You know, all I had to do was just walk in there and say, you know, exactly what I was looking for. And they hooked me up pretty quick. So coming off the filter head, it's 3 8 MPT. I'm going into a 90 and I'm running 3 8 uh, MPT fittings all the way down. I've got these uh, ball valves. Now the reason I'm putting the ball valves in is so that way I can, when I go to change the filter, I can just shut that off on each side, spin the filter off, and then turn it back on once the new filter is on and not leak any coolant uh, out of the system through the hoses. And after the ball valves, I go down to a 3 8 MPT to 5 8 inch inside diameter hose barb. And then I picked up about 10 feet of heater hose that's 5 8 inside diameter and then for hose clamps uh while i was over at green line i was asking them for you know if they had any sort of automotive uh, style hose clamps but uh this is what they hooked me up with they're kind of like the the screw style hose clamp but they don't dig into your um they don't dig into your hose when you tighten them down so if you can see on the inside it's smooth but on the outside it's still the same uh, screw type so i got four of those and then the only thing I'm missing out of this is the brass fittings to go uh, the for the feed and return into the block. Now I need to investigate still exactly where I want to uh, feed and return from the block. So I haven't yet bought those fittings, but I'll show you exactly what those fittings are when I buy them. As for the filter itself, uh, I'm getting a, or I'm running a Fleet Guard WF2070, uh, and this has two units. So if you go into uh, the document that I linked below and you read for our engine size uh, this is the correct uh, filter amount of units for the uh, capacity of the cooling system now you can run one of these or you can run one without any sort of additives um, and it's just like a filter media instead of uh, adding the chemical you know over time as you run this filter so i guess like the way this uh, filter is designed is there's some filter media on the outside and then on the inside towards the center there's like a block of uh, chemicals that gets breaks down over time as the coolant flows through the filter and then it releases into the system so right now um, as this is sort of just a universal mount um, what i need to do is head out to the truck and find a good location to mount this 
So what I'm thinking is I'm thinking that I want to mount it over on the uh, passenger side of the truck uh, because the inlet and outlet port of where I'm thinking about uh, taking the coolant from is on that side of the engine. And I'm thinking that I might want to relocate the uh, factory coolant overflow and mount this bracket there because it seems to make the most sense from what I've uh, been looking at. But I'll, I'll go and take that out and move a couple things around and see exactly uh, where the best fit is for this. Okay, so I'm just deciding on the location that I want to put the coolant filter here. Um, I originally thought about removing this and mounting it on the flat spot behind the coolant overflow tank, but after taking this off and looking down in here behind the headlight, I realized that there's room um, to put the bracket for the coolant uh, filter head just right here on this bolt right there. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and mount it. There's enough room between here and the filter assembly to fit between the factory air box. So uh, that's where I'm gonna mount it. And in order to do that, I'm gonna have to pull the grill off so I can uh, put a couple bolts through there and mount it uh, nice and tight. To tee into the inlet and outlet for the coolant lines on the block, if you have a manual transmission truck, it's pretty easy. The return, is just down here so where this line is coming in to that assembly that's for the uh, transmission fluid to fluid uh, heat exchanger that's the return so uh, if you can get in a a fitting that has that adapter already off of an automatic transmission truck you can tee into there for your return and then the supply you can either on the top of the block run from here that's a half inch NPT fitting or where I'm going to run it is uh, just inside of the alternator. This is just inside the alternator uh, coming off the block. I believe that's also a half inch NPT fitting. And here I'm going to try and tee into there. That's the factory position where it goes to the fluid to fluid heat exchanger for the automatic transmission trucks. Now because this is an automatic transmission truck, I'm going to have to figure out a way to tee in at the inlet and the outlet of both of these couplings. So I'm thinking about putting a T here, uh, like a brass fitting T here, as well as down at the return line. But first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and mount that filter head. So we'll start by taking the grill off. I think what I'm going to do here is I'll have to trim uh, the top side of this bracket here where I marked it and then this bottom bolt is for the headlight bucket so I'll probably use that existing one and then maybe drill um, a hole next to it so I can put a bolt through there to make it extra stable. Alright so I'm going to chop uh, the edge of this tab off because it's inside the truck is just sticking over hanging over and not doing anything So just to clean it up, we'll chop that off throw some paint on the bare metal and then we can final install <laughs> Okay, so I've pretty much got the whole thing mounted here uh, permanently on the inside. So I can put the grill back on and I'll put the overflow tank back in its position. And so whenever I need to change that filter, um, I'll just need to take the three screws out of here, move that to the side and then change the filter. All right, I got the grill button back up and the coolant overflow back on. Here's what it looks like when it's all installed there. 
I put the hoses on and ran the hoses temporarily. Just um, they're kind of just flopping back here. I'm gonna run to the um, fitting and line store, Green Line, and grab a couple uh, couple of those T fittings, and then work on the inlet and outlet from the block. So I've taken the intake off, I've taken the alternator off, and uh, now now you can see I have access. This is where I'm going to tee uh, for the feed, and then the return is going to be down, and I'll tee into this. So if you don't have an automatic truck, these lines won't be here. And you can um, use your feed out of here. That'll just be a plug in the block, which I believe is half inch MPT. And then the return uh, can go to here. You'll just need a, a way to return into this fitting here. All right, so I just put a bucket underneath and drained all the coolant out of here. It's a little bit of a mess. That's the 90. And my goal here is to use this to tee into both lines. I had to cut this pipe just a little bit. All right, so I've routed the um, outside of the filter and this is the return. So the outline from the filter head is gonna go, it's just a gentle sweep and then I'll go into this T here. Make sure there's no kinks in the line. Perfect. Okay, so I've got the return line set up done now. Now I need to tackle the feed line. So the problem I'm uh, running into now is this is the only fitting I, I could uh, come across that would go into the block. And the problem is it's a little too wide. So that would hit the alternator um, if I set it up like that. So what I think I'm gonna try and do is take this half inch uh, elbow hose barb, thread it into the block. I'll eliminate this uh, metal line and run a rubber hose back to meet up just by the uh, fluid to fluid heat exchanger back there. And, and then I'll put a T just before the heat exchanger. All right, I changed my mind. I'm just gonna use the straight out here and then, uh, well, one reason is because there's no place to wrench that out of the block and it's pretty much seized in there. So I'm gonna put this hose on here and then I'll either gently sweep down below or beside the oil filter and then back up or I'll come up over top of it. That didn't work. The hose kinked behind the alternator. So I'm gonna see if I can take that off. Maybe thread that 45 in there. And then I got a hose barb that'll come off of that. Oh, I think, I think it's no. fun. No? It's spinning on it. Oh, shit. All right, so I'm having to change direction on which way I'm going here um, because it was hitting the alternator when I put the alternator back on. Um, ideally, ideally I would replace this 90 right now but I couldn't find any replacements at the store. So I'll have to replace that later, but I'm gonna keep the factory 90 in there and then uh, just uh, couple this to another hose and run this hose around the oil filter where my T is uh, for the um, supply to the coolant filter. So there's this way there's no kinks. It kind of just gradually goes around the filter and then into the T.
Okay, now just to show you in detail my supply, the factory 90, and then I join the two hoses there. I go around the oil filter, and then my T is just before the uh, fluid to fluid heat exchanger. There's my T. Supply line run, runs back here, and then the outlet runs into my T here. Right, the last thing to do is fill up our coolant system. I'm using concentrate and then I'll add deionized water after. All right, so now we're at the point where we can check for leaks at all of our fittings and then top up our coolant after the engines run for a little bit. Okay, so we've got everything installed now uh, for the coolant filter and all the TNs on the supply and the outlet. Uh, I checked for leaks, there's no leaks, so what I'm going to do is I'll go for a little test drive now um, and you know let the system come up to temperature, check for leaks again, and then I'll come back, let the truck cool down fully, and uh, once it's cooled down fully, I'll check the uh, level of the coolant again, top it up, and then we'll be done. So this is all in part, I'm doing this because um, my heat is not working fully in the cab, and I also want to install a Webasto coolant heater, that's my next uh, bounds, and I just want to make sure that my coolant that's flowing through both the Webasto and my heater core are both uh, clean and don't uh, clog up or damage uh, the system or the heater core. Okay, uh, thanks for watching guys, hope this helps, and cheers.